in this video we will see how to solve the simply supported beam problem with the given uh, moment about a point and the UDL so this is the simply supported beam at point A and point B and first pan A to C it is of 1 meters and C to D it is 0.5 meters and D to B it is 1 meters so I am going to use only the x coordinate with A as the origin by default y and z will be 0 so first I am going to create A point at 0, 0, 0 that is at the origin and at C I am going to give the x value as 1000 because I, we need to convert the 1 meters to millimeters and next at point D I am going to add x value as 1500 millimeters and at point B I am going to add the x value as 2500 millimeters and now we will open the ANSYS workbench uh, that is the ANSYS APDL so first we will go to the preference and I am going to click on the structural and then click on OK since we are going to do the structural analysis and now I will go to the preprocessor to add the element type. Since we are going to model a simple beam, we will click on beam and two nodes 188 will apply. And now we have to add the material properties. I will go over here and we will go to the structural, linear, elastic and isotropic. EX means Young's modulus. 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the Young's modulus of the steel and PRXY means it is the poison's ratio these are the values pertaining to the steel and now I will go to the suction and define the suction here we are going to model a simple beam so I am going to select the beam and common suction and here I am going to give the name as simply supported beam and I can give the name anything but you just need to remember and the width value that is the P you can see from this diagram I am going to give it as say 300 and height I am going to give it as say 500 let's say 600 I will just keep the 600 and then click on preview you can see the cross section area and you can see the physical properties of this material and then click on apply and then click ok to exit from this view right click anywhere on the screen and then click on replot and you can see. and after adding the suction we will model the beam now we will go to the modeling expand this and first we will create a key point on the active coordinate system CS means coordinate system first um, if you are not adding any value by default it will take the values as 0 first I am going to add at the origin so I just click on apply and now next one is at 1000 mm this point C is at 1000 mm so I am going to add the x coordinate this is x, this is y and this is z and the next one is this point d that is at 1500 mm so I'll add 1500 and next one is 2500 ok and now we have to creating these points that is this no key points we have to draw the line so I'll expand this line and I'm going to use the active part you don't need to uh, zoom in or select the X, X at that point just see I just keep my mouse over here but still you can select it and then I'll click on OK and after modeling we need to mesh it so I'll go to the machine size control and I'll, uh, I'll go to the manual size global and I'll click on size and I'm going to divide that is NDIV number of element division so I am going to divide it into 20 so each and everything will be divided into 20 elements so next after applying this uh, there is a meshing but we need to apply it to the beam so I will go to the mesh and I will go to the line so I am going to pick all the lines and now you can see and to get back the view I will just go to the plot. I'll just go and click on lines. You can see get back the view. You can, you can see that it has been divided now. And now I'll go to the plot controls. Click on number A to get the key point number on the screen. You can see that we'll get the numbers now. And now we will apply the loads. Expand the loads. We will define the loads. Before applying the loads, I'll just apply go to structure over here and click on displacement. 
this displacement allows us to add the supports and you can see from this it is a simply supported beam that is it is not allowed for the displacement in x y and z direction and the rotation along the z axis is allowed but rotation along x and y is not allowed so at point this end and this end it is uh, simply supported beam so i just go to the key points and I'll just select these two points and then click on apply see i am going to select ux uy uz that is displacement along x displacement along y displacement along z but i am going to select rotation along x axis rotation along y axis but i am not going to select this rotation along z axis because i am going to rotate it at along z axis and then click on apply and after that we will apply the moment here they have given the moment at point D it is 2 kN meter it is not per meter so here in ANSYS APDO the working units are newton and millimeter so you need to convert this so we will get 2 into 10 to the power 6 so now I will go to the force or moment and add the key nodes I select this key node because there itself I need to apply and I am going to give the moment along the Z minus minus 2 forward by 6 zeros because 10 to the power 3 kilo newton so kilo newton and meters also you need to convert into millimeters so we we'll get 2 followed by 6 zeros I'll just check 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 I'll just check it one more once more 2 3 4 5 and 6 yes and now we have applied and then click on ok and now we will see how to apply this UDL so here go to pressure expand this and click on on beams and now we will click on box because I will select the box see I will just drag this and here one more thing we have left make sure that make sure that everything is selected properly and then click on apply and here the load key should be 2 if the load key is 1 you will not be able to add it and the value at i point is 2 here the value is 2 kN per meter so if you convert it to newton per millimeter you will get 2 itself it has been deselected I will just go and select it again make sure that everything is selected and then click on apply load key is 2 and 2 and 2 this i is the initial point that is at the origin and the j is the ending point if you are having the trapezoidal load or the uniformly varying load at that time you can specify the i value as 0 or i value j value as 4 depending upon your needs and i value as initially if it is some value like uh, 2 uh, and uh, the second value is at 4 you get the trapezoidal load uh, for that one you can use and you can offset it from the node 1 also and from the node 2 also that is j and i but i am not going to offset it now you can see that udl has been applied and now after adding all the loads and now we will go to the solution and click on solve current ls yeah and now the solution is done so i'll just close it and now we need to view the results so first i'll go to the general post processing and just check the view results your results viewer i'll just check the displacement uh, like uh, i'll just check the rotation vector sum and you can see but now i need the bending moment and the shear force diagram for that one i will just go and create a table I'll go to the element table and now we'll define the table and you need to remember this so go to the by sequence number and smisc by default you have to remember this you can find this values from the ANSYS help go to help and you can find it even I have found out the same way where you will get for the axial force what is the number element number that's the value and for the shear force along z shear force along y and the bending moment along z x you can get the different values and for this one now first I will add the 
shear force along y. So shear force along y starting point is 6 and the ending point is 19. You need to remember this. This is for the shear force. And now I'll apply the bending moment. And that is the moment. So I need to find the moment, right? So the for the moment along the set, I will add the initial point as 3 and in ending point as 16. Yeah, and now we are done. The first two, 6 and 19 are for the shear force and the 3 and 16 are for the bending moment. And now we will see the bending moment diagram. And now we will go and uh, click on plot results. Counter plot and we click on element, sorry, and now we will click on line element uh, results. So 6 and 19 are for the shear force. So we will just so now we will just check for the shear force that is the 6 and the 19 and now I click on apply and now you can see there is a shear force diagram and here you can see the maximum as well as the minimum. So the minimum is 750 and the maximum is minimum is minus 750 at this point and the maximum is 1200 at this point you can see it is constant over here and now let us check the graph what we have got in the solution. Yes and here I am getting 800 this is 0.8 kilo newton so it is 800 newton and here it is 1.2 kilo newton that is 1200 but here there is a sign convection is different so but still it is uh, same value but uh, you will get the exactly uh, minus 800 as the reaction over here but if you go for the higher values of meshing here I have taken only 200 sorry 20 but if you go for higher values of meshing you will get the exactly the same answer and now we will find the bending moment diagram. For bending moment, 3 and 16 I have defined it. I will just click on apply. Now you can see there is same bending moment diagram. Here you can see the minimum as well as the maximum value. You can see there is the same. I will just check with the graph. See, you can get the same. And now we will find out how to find out the reactions. Go to list results and click on reaction solutions and I am going to find only the reaction that is along the y. So if you want all items you will get the forces along x, forces along y, forces along z at the reaction as well as the moment. But if you click on all structural forces you will get only the forces you will not get any moment. But if you want all the structural moment you will get only the all the moments about the supports. So I am just going to get all the forces but you just need since the vertical load is applied from top, you just need to get the uh, reaction solution of F1. But still, I will show all items, but you can, I will just show you. See, you will find the reaction. Yeah, see here, F5 at node 1. This is the node 1. You will get exactly 800. At node 42, that is at the last, you will get 1200. If you click on all items, see, it will show everything. Fx, Fy, Fz, moment along x, moment along y and moment along z is 0. Since it is a simply supported beam, it is allowed to rotate. Only if you restrict it to rotate, you will be getting the moment about that point. And suppose if you need to find out for each and every element what is the shear force acting as well as the bending moment, go to this list results and here you will be having the element table data. Here I want the shear force as well as the bending moment. Even if you select 19 it will give the same answers or you won't give. But this 6 is for the shear force and this 3 is for the... You can just enable it and just see. You can see 6 and 19 both are for the shear force and 3 and 16 are for the bending moment. You can see the same results are there. You can see this element. You can see this is the shear force at the element number one, element number two, and element number three, and so on till element number forty-two. The number of elements depends upon the machine size. The more number of, uh, like more, if you divide the number of divisions in the machine, the more number of elements will be there, and the more results will be the accurate. And here you can see. And now we will see how to animate the results. Go to plot controls, animate, 
and now I'll just use the deformed shape. So I'll just click on OK. And now you can see the deformation, how it will be there. And if you want only the forward, you can just add it forward. And we can just stop. And thank you for watching my video. Please do like and subscribe my channel for more videos like this and comment below for any suggestions. Thank you.